Welcome back to Power and Politics. Well, the past decade saw the simultaneous waging of two wars, an increasing concern and urgency about environmental issues, and with 9-11, one of those events that truly alter the course of human history. Little wonder these events energize filmmakers around the world to take on the political establishment and address the huge issues of our time. Now, films have always taken on political issues, but joining us now to discuss some of their picks for the best political movies of the past decade are in Toronto award-winning director Peter Raymond. His film credits include the internationally acclaimed Shake Hands with the Devil, marvelous film, the story of Romeo Dallaire. Also from Vancouver, we're now joined by the Minister of Heritage, James Moore, an avid movie watcher himself. And let's start with the Minister. Good day to both of you, Minister. Let's start. Don't reveal your top pick yet, but give us your, your, some of your top political movies of the decade. I, I think you have to look at movies. Um, uh, in gen generally speaking, I think you look at movies that inspire, that highlight controversy, um, and that generally uh, focus the public to think about things in different ways. So some of the movies that I have on my list as the top political movies is I have, for example, Milk. Uh, you know the movie, the, the story of, of Harvey Milk uh, and, and what he confronted, running for uh, this, running for controller down in the city of San Francisco. I mean, here is a guy who, as the the, the promo to the movie said, he was a man who uh, in, inspired controversy, but also inspired a whole group of people to stand up and stand up for civil rights in in a, in a way that hadn't been done before in the city of San Francisco. Um, so uh, I think you look for movies that also uplift and enlighten, but also movies that shine light uh, onto some of the darkest parts of our nature. Movies like Philadelphia, movies like uh, movies like. Uh, uh, Schindler's List and, and uh, these, these kinds of films that really open up our eyes and make us think and empathize and sympathize with things that we otherwise, otherwise might not uh, have the capacity to. And, and of course, Minister, you know, you say milk. What a, what a marvelous performance, a great script. It just doesn't have to be worthy in its intentions. It has to be worthy in its execution. And, and milk, I would also put it on, on my list. It, fantastic well, and, film. And, and, well, and when, when was the last time Sean Penn was in a bad movie? And Sean Penn is probably the, one of the most brilliant actors of the last 20 or 30 years. You know, we, we, he, can play, um, he can play Spicoli in Fast Times at Richmond High, and he can also play Harvey Milk and I Am Sam. I mean, he's a truly brilliant performer. And let's just face it, we love Fast Times at Richmond High, just not in the last decade, <laughs> right, Minister? Uh, Peter Raymond, how about you? Give, don't reveal your top pick yet, but what, what films made a difference for you in this last decade? Well, political films make a difference. I think, you know, with filmmaking is really the literature of our age, and more and more people, you know, respond to films, get their information from films, feel that they're pushed and prodded by political films. So there's so many of them. Uh, the Fog of War, the film about Robert McNamara by Errol Morris is a great film. You can't ignore Michael Morris films, love him or hate him, you know, films like Fahrenheit 9-11, which many people say had a really significant effect on the election. There are many many documentaries that I would like to uh, point to. And, 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 and Peter, uh, just distinguish between, you made one of, the, one of the great Canadian and one of the great international political films, but just point out the difference Thank between you. documentaries and, and features, because they, they play different roles, but in the last decade, documentaries really surged to the forefront, didn't they? Absolutely. Oh yeah, people are going to the theaters now and paying money and watching a documentary in a dark space that are 90 minutes, two hours long, like a, like a Hollywood feature film. And documentaries do very, very well in, in, in theaters. They're about real people and real events. And uh, often it's human beings that help illuminate you know, historical events. You just follow an interesting character and you get to know about an event like the genocide in Rwanda, like the, the coup in Chile, by following someone like Romeo Dallaire or Ariel Dorfman. Yeah, and some of these great... And, 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 yeah, go ahead, and Minister. I was yeah, I was going to say, and also there's, there's a crossover going on now. Of course, you have documentaries, you have historic Sorry. documentaries. And the, f the first time that I noticed it was probably, I would think, in, in 94, I think was the year that Forrest Gump came out, is the use of archival, uh, archival footage within feature films themselves. Uh, the list of the top movies that I have, if you look at a, a movie like Munich, uh, I mentioned Milk, Munich, 13 Days, uh, 13 Days, a great film. If you can get past Kevin Cof Costner's horrific attempt at a Bostonian accent. Um, I actually, just that, for the record, that, Mr., I thought he was pretty good in that one. <laughs> That's a good he was film. good in it. Again, if, if, you can, if you can accept the accent, uh, the, the movie is great. But again, these are all three of those movies are movies that use archival footage to place you back in history. I mean, it, it really is uh, remarkable 
sticking with milk. The first and one more, we mentioned, uh, you look and, at, um, and, and when, you, when you look at Anita Bryant, I mean, the, this, this venomous bigot and, and the kind of anger that she had and using <laughs> actual archival footage and, you know, imposed on the story of Harvey Milk is quite something. 13 days and, and, and the actual archival footage of, of the, the setting up of missile batteries is really quite something. There's a lot of crossover, too, in documentary where you have reenactments, dramatic reenactments that can work very, very effectively to help tell that story. I mean, uh, just, Peter, before we go, I mean, in, in, in your Shake Hands with the Devil, even the reenactments of historical events there, in this case, the genocide in Rwanda, that had a dramatic impact not only on the audience, but on the people making the film, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. These are very powerful films and can affect people for a long time and can help change history to some, to some degree. All right, uh, Peter Raymond, uh, Minister Moore, hang in there. We're going to take a short break. We'll get back with their list of the top political movies of the decade. We'll give you our list here at Power and Politics. Stay with us. More Power and Politics goes to the movies when we come back. And a brand new name. This is CBC News Network.